Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to another daily movie review. Today, we're going to be talking about the 1976 film Robin and Marion. Now, if you listen to the most recent uh, Zoobox Goes to the Movies, I did a little solo episode where I just kind of talked about Sean Connery and his legacy and his filmography. And so this week, I'm going to go through and watch a couple Sean Connery movies, kind of pick ones that I haven't seen or a little off the beaten path, things maybe you're not you wouldn't immediately think of when you think of Sean Connery just to spice things up. You know, we've all seen James Bond. We've all seen the last crusade. We've all seen the rock, um, hunt for red October. We've all seen that. Oh, that's also great. Um, but yeah, so today we're going to be talking about Robin and Marion, uh, the directed by Richard Lester. Richard Lester is most famously known for directing a hard day's night, the Beatles movie, uh, three musketeers, and also taking over, Directing duties for um, Richard Donner in Superman 2. Because Superman 2 and 1, the Richard Donner movies, uh, were filmed back to back, or at least they started to. And somewhere in the production of Superman 2, Richard Donner has a falling out with producers, and Richard Lester comes in and takes over, and the rest is history. Uh, the film is written by James Goldman. It stars Sean Connery, Audrey Hepburn, Robert Shaw, Richard Harris, Nicole Williamson, Dem. Holm Elliott, Kenneth Hay, Ronnie Barker, Ian Holm, Bill Maynard, and others. The logline plot synopsis is Robin Hood, aging none too gracefully, returns exhausted from the Crusades to woo and win made Marion one last time. So, yeah, I had seen this a very, very long time ago. Uh, so this is probably the first time I've watched this movie since I was like seven or eight, maybe. Um, it's an interesting movie. I didn't have much of a memory of it, probably because it's it's a very low-key movie. It's a very subtle movie, very kind of melancholy, uh, much more than I expected because it's kind of, you know, advertised a little bit as an adventure film, but it's really kind of a depressing adventure film because it's about the notions of, like, kind of your legacy, of the idea of being a hero, of being legendary, and what that means to you, what that also means to the, to the larger world around you. Um, do you go... To other places and do people know who you are so this is an interesting thing with robin hood you know he has the backstory of being you know the famous robin hood in sherwood forest and whatnot stealing stealing from the rich and giving to the poor and then uh because he kind of swears fealty to richard the lionheart he goes and fights in the crusades which is this great equalizing thing it like kind of humbles him almost breaks him uh just the brutality of war and kind of the gross and fucked up things that he's asked to do in the name of the crown. He kind of becomes a broken man. He gets disillusioned. He doesn't know where he fits in in the world. He doesn't even know what it means to be a hero anymore. Um, and he comes back and by, you know, ends up kind of, you know, it ends up kind of being a traditional Robin Hood story just in, through a different prism where it's like, you know, Robin Hood versus uh, versus the Sheriff of Nottingham and played by Robert Shaw. You're one of my favorite character actors, you know. You all know Robert Shaw. Come on, you've seen uh, Jaws, Quint, Captain Quint. And it ends up kind of being that. So it ends up being way more traditional by the end. I would say like the second half of the movie turns into a more traditional Robin Hood story. But in a, it, it's a lot more interesting because it does constantly acknowledge this kind of not just getting older, but what getting older means. And how life experiences affects even your own view of yourself and your legend, as it were, like I said, um, Audrey Hepburn plays, uh, maid Marion, who at this point in the story has, uh, basically become a nun, <laughs> which is, uh, you know, I can't remember. I, maybe I'm a little, I'm a little, uh, a little rusty on my Robin hood lore. I don't know. Is that what maid Marion does? Cause I know that's what like Guinevere does in the, Camelot stories and the King Arthur stories, but I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, and there's a lot of, uh, kind of funny stuff that goes on there. Richard Lester as a director is really coming in and doing kind of a journeyman thing here in a, in a bad way. We've talked about journeyman directors. I think there's good ones and I think there's bad ones. A contemporary of Richard Lester's that I really, really have a great fondness for is, um, John Borman who also worked with Connery around this time. He did directed Zardoz. Uh, he's a great journeyman director. Richard Lester kind of does feel a little bit like a TV director. Surprisingly enough, you know, just because I was thinking, you know, looking at some of the things he's directed, you know, Superman 2, 
Three Musketeers. And then I really started thinking about it. I'm like, oh, well, that kind of makes sense because he's kind of there's there's something kind of flat about his direction. It's not like very cinematic, which kind of does a disservice to the production design of this movie. Like the sets and the costumes are fantastic uh, and everywhere. Like it feels very medieval and it feels like gross in the way that a medieval world should feel. Think of, you know, almost like Game of Thrones esque. A little bit of a lighter touch to it, of course. It's not as dark. Uh, it could have used a little bit of, I think, pizzazz in the cinematography. Uh, was the cinematographer was David Watkin, who's done a few things that you've probably heard of. Out of Africa, Chariots of Fire, Moonstruck. Um, not that those are necessarily movies known for their cinematography, but, you know, a working cinematographer, not bad. Uh, the score, I would say, is another kind of low point for the movie. It's a little, it's not, it's a little too melancholy and a little silly at times. Uh, I don't, it almost doesn't jive sometimes with the material, which I was kind of not really surprised by, I suppose, because it it wants to be kind of like a, kind of like a family film, but the essence of it, like the point of it, the, the, the subtext of it is too dark. Honestly, there's this one of the best parts in the movie is uh, Connery kind of gives a monologue to Maid Marian. They're out in the woods after they've kind of just escaped from the sheriff of Nottingham. And, and he's talking about his time spent in the Crusades. And he's talking about kind of the atrocities of the awful nature of it and how he's lost himself. And the re- one of the reasons why he co- when he comes back, the only thing he knows is who he used to be and Maid Marian. That's all he knows. So he's trying to like come to terms with it, trying to convince Maid Marian to be like, yo, you know, maybe you should stop being a nun. <laughs> maybe you should come hang out with me and the boys again. Have a good time. Um, but yeah, it's actually a really powerful scene. It's a really interesting scene, and it comes beautifully full circle at the very end of the movie. Uh, like, I don't want to give anything away. It is from 1976, though. And it's more about the journey than the destination, right, kids? So this being a, a melancholy affair, you know, Robin Hood gets to kind of do this champions fight with the Sheriff of Nottingham where it's going to be like, we're going to decide this battle, but it's just going to be between you and I. You and I are going to be the ones that fight. Everybody else is going to watch, and we're going to decide who wins. This is something that actually happened. Uh, not too often, but it did happen. And, uh, you know, Robin wins the day, but he gets really severely maimed. He's bleeding out. He's dying. And Maid Marian takes him back to her little cottage or to the, yeah, to the nunnery or wherever. And, uh, you know, she tells him for the first time in the movie, kind of gives over. She says, I love you more than God. Right now, I love you more than God. That's a really powerful moment between them. And, and, and in that moment, he becomes Robin Hood again. And there's a great, like, little kind of symbolic moment at the end of the movie where He pulls out his bow and arrow for the last time and just shoots it out the window. Kind of his last order to his, to the, to the men, to the merry men and to uh, just kind of his last statement as a man. And it was, it's really powerful. And the movie does a great job. I think of building and earning those moments. Like I said, I do think if there's a fault in the movie, if there's something I don't love about the movie, it is some of the direction uh, because it's flat. This movie, this story, these performances, I feel like deserve a much better, um, much better cinematic showcase, I guess we'll say. Because it's, it's a really, you know, people talk about like, what should you remake? Should you remake movies? Should you not remake movies? Something like Robin and Marion, if you could get like a great modern cast, some older actors, hell, even bring fucking Russell Crowe back, you know? (laughs) I haven't, you know, I've never actually watched the Tony Scott Robin Hood. Maybe I'll get around to that sometime soon. I, I, I think I own it. I started it one time and like never finished it. But uh, somebody like that, it'd be interesting to see him as like an old Robin Hood. You know, bring Kate Blanchett back too from the Scott, from the Ridley Scott Robin Hood. Bring her back. She'd be Old Maid Marian. Uh, and those things are. It's really interesting to just touch on this type of figure in the way that the movie does. And I wish that the movie kind of just did a little bit better job for its actors and for the story itself. But having said that, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised by Robin and Marion. Now don't, there's a fucking cover for this movie. 
which is why I think I dismissed it for so long. Like why I was kind of like not into it. There's like this cheesy. Let's see if I can find it. There's a cheesy. Um, it's like a cheesy DVD cover. Makes it look like a Disney movie. <laughs> yeah, I just found it. Here, I'll try to. I'll throw it up on the screen for everybody if I can find one that's a good size. Yeah, but it, it kind of just like turned me off to the movie. I don't know why. Like maybe that's just some weird bias I have or something. But I could never get into it because of this. I could just couldn't. It's a small picture, but it's a picture nonetheless. Nope. <laughs> I don't have anything set up. Sorry, folks. There we go. We're getting there. We're getting there, everyone. Try to do things on the fly. Try to be cool. Like I know what I'm doing. There we go. See that right there? That that cover is wildly misleading. Do not believe it's lies. That thing is not, it's not representative of the movie. It doesn't it makes it look like, like Darby O'Gill. You know? That uh <laughs> that Disney movie he made in the late 50s. So I don't know what the deal is with that. But that key art, somebody should go to fucking jail. Whole generations of people being like, I ain't watching that stupid shit. Look at that stupid shit. <laughs> it looks like a, like on Golden Pond, like some kind of like elderly romance movie, you know? You know, it's funny. Audrey Hepburn actually came out of retirement. She had like kind of an unofficial retirement at this period of her life. And she came out of it to be in this movie at the behest of her sons. She has uh, two sons and they're like, yo. That's Sean, that's James Bond. Go be in a movie. When are you going to have a chance to be in a James Bond movie, you old bat? Go be in one with Sir Sean Connery. Although it wasn't Sir Sean Connery at the time. Uh, who else was in this that I really loved? It's got like a lot of great, great bit parts, people in it. Uh, where's Richard Harris. Richard Harris plays Richard the Lionheart. Uh, he has a little bit of a bit part, and it's great. He's great. He's awesome. When is Richard Harris not awesome, though? You know, too bad he had to go out making the fucking Harry Potter movies. Too bad for him. <clears throat> but he's a great, great actor. You know, you know Richard Harris. Come on. <laughs> Unforgiven plays English Bob and Unforgiven. Savage Hearts. This is the Sea. Grizzly Falls. Gladiator. Marcus Aurelius and Gladiator. Great actor. Mutiny on the Bounty great stage actor too he's done a lot of there's a lot of stuff uh you can even go watch some like teleplays that he did just a real powerful actor you know good dude and also my robert shaw my beautiful beautiful robert shaw beautiful captain quint i uh, really really love robert shaw and uh anything he's in is always a treat this is no exception and he's it's interesting because he's like unusually sober acting <laughs> You know, famously, he was kind of a little bit of a drunk. And actually, it's what makes his, like, performance in Jaws so memorable. It's the fact that he was kind of intoxicated a lot of the time. But, uh, yeah. Well, like I said, if you've never seen uh, Robin and Marion, I think it's well worth your time checking out. It's a nice, it's a, you know, it's kind of like a, it's got like kind of a rainy day movie vibe to it. It's a little lackadaisical in its pace. But if you like a good character study, a good uh, a good character drama, I think it's worth your time, especially if you have any interest in just Robin Hood lore in general. It's an interesting twist on that lore. And I think all the performances, performances rather, sorry, I got a little bit of a cold, not COVID, just a cold. Um, Connery, Hepburn, you know, Robert Shaw, even Ian Holmes shows up. The old, the old Bilbo Baggins there shows up. Ian Holmes, he's another great actor. He's, he's still, no, he passed away this year. Wow, 2020 has been a fucking nightmare. Ian Holmes great. But yeah, he he kind of does a little bit part in this and he's great. He's great. The movie's got like a nice lightness to it even though it it is kind of heavy and dark when you really start thinking of the subtext and what is actually going on with the characters. It doesn't take itself entirely seriously in the sense that uh it does feel like a lived in world where people are just getting along and trying to figure out how to not be miserable in kind of a miserable in miserable conditions, right? Medieval life. So Anyways, that's going to do it for me today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to know more about Zoobox, hit the link or hit the check out the description. There's links in there. 
Also, if you'd like to make a recommendation for a daily movie review for something for Zoobox Goes to the Movies, the big show, uh, throw it in the comments. I'll put it on the list. All right, everybody. You have the best one ever.